Andrew Tate has made a big transformation. Some may think that it's just his wealth and his status, but did you know he's also enhanced his looks too? This is known in the manosphere as looks maxing, a process of making yourself more attractive. Now, looks maxing can be as little as having better grooming or even going to the extreme of doing multiple surgeries to make yourself look like a totally different person. So in this video, we're gonna take a deep dive into Andrew Tate's looks maxing process. And in the end, you'll see if looks really do matter. Now, I'm sure 90% of you, or 99% of you actually know who Andrew Tate is, but you probably don't know a lot of background stats about him. So let's go ahead and review that first. To start off, he is six foot two. So it's safe to say he's definitely have not had any height increasing surgery. He's also 36 years old and has a background in kickboxing, which has played a major role in his physique development over the years, especially in his 20s, which we'll get into. Now, let's be real here. Andrew Tate was never a bad looking or ugly looking guy. Sure, the Black Pill community can point out these little flaws about him, but if you look at him before this whole entire process, or even now, he kind of is a bit average. You know, he's not average in his height, but if we're talking like facially, aesthetically, really doesn't necessarily turn heads, but you necessarily wouldn't say he's a ugly guy either. So even with him being average, this is proof of concept that there's always room to improve yourself. But let's not jump the gun. Let's start off in 2013 to 2016, Andrew Tate. And this is when he was in his mid 20s. Now at this stage, Andrew's physique has taken many turns and changes and been through many stages. I believe he's looked his best whenever he was in fighting shape. However, there is a time period to where he actually stopped fighting. And this is where we kind of see his normal physique. Now, I wouldn't say he was insanely muscular, but he was just fit, just normally fit. I would say around 13 to 15% body fat, nothing really stood out. Now, also during this time period, you notice that Andrew Tate had a full head of hair, but here's one clue, which leads into one of the first procedures he's probably gotten, and that is a hair transplant. Because if you take a look whenever he did have hair, it was always a bit thinning. It was never that full head of hair that a lot of guys want. So with that being said, in 2018 to 2020, there is some speculation that Andrew Tate did get a hair transplant. He's never actually admitted and came out with this information. However, his brother Tristan Tate, who is definitely heavy on the looks maxing, did actually say that he himself has gotten a hair transplant, but Andrew has never came out and admitted it. However, if you look at pictures of him with his head shaved low, you can kind of see an outline of what would be a hair transplant. Now, a hair transplant is one of the first procedures that a lot of guys get in regards to the looks maxing process. And that's because they realized the importance of hair and their appearance. But here's a fun fact, hair transplants don't always work out. Yes, you can actually get the grafts done and probably see a little bit of hair growth, but that doesn't mean that there won't be complications with it. That doesn't mean you'll have to get a second one done. There's a lot that can also go wrong that a lot of people don't realize, but in Andrew Tate's case, he actually decides to go bald anyway. So I'm not sure if the hair transplant actually even mattered. He might've kept it for a little bit, but the time frame in which he's grown the most, we have seen him without hair. Now moving into 2020, the 2022 time frame era, this is the look we kind of know all Andrew Tate for. Once again, he shaved his head down low. He keeps a short sort of stubble beard. But one thing I noticed in a big difference in about 2022, late 2022, that Andrew Tate got done is that he's actually fixed his teeth. So next up to the hair, the next looks maxing process he's done is probably get veneers. Because if you look at the old interviews in regards to Andrew Tate's teeth, you'll notice that they weren't the prettiest. It was a bit spaced, a bit jagged, especially at certain angles. And teeth are very, very important when it comes to maxing your attractiveness. And it's not one of the easiest things you can do to fix or at least expensive, but it is something that will definitely make a big difference. And I believe Andrew Tate throughout time noticed that, especially as he started to make more money. So once again, he's never came out and said this, but I'm 99% sure that at this point in time, Andrew actually did get veneers done. If you don't know what veneers are, is actually when they kind of shave your teeth down the actual tooth and then put a porcelain veneer cap over it that fits the client's mouth so that it all looks natural and clean. In regards to his physique, I've noticed that he actually put on a lot of muscle since his younger 20s post fighting days. Now, of course, all of that is not muscle. I'm sure a big percentage of it is actually fat or just slowing down to his metabolism. 
but the way he takes pictures, the angles and lighting, it makes him look pretty massive. Keep in mind, he is six foot two and he does have a good frame, but there's definitely been a physique difference in his 30s versus his 20s. Now, moving into 2023, I believe this is where we saw the biggest change in regards to his overall appearance. And this is the post jail era. What do we see when he left jail? He gained a bit of weight, he grew out his beard, he grew out his hair. In regards to his weight gain, he did mention that he did 7,000 push-ups in jail. Not much else, it seems like. I'm not sure how jail workouts work, but I'm sure his activity was lower. He was probably eating a bit more. I'm sure that can constitute to the weight gain we saw after he left jail. Now here's what's interesting. After we saw that he grew out his beard and grew out his hair, he actually didn't decide to cut it. And I believe this was a great decision in regards to his overall masculine appearance. What he decided to do was actually fade his hair into a new style while keeping some on top and keeping the long beard. I believe the faded haircut, it does make Andrew Tate look a bit more attractive and makes him look more younger and probably more appealing to the ladies, even though that's probably not his goal right now, as he stated before in some interviews. But one benefit about his longer beard is that I've noticed it helps hide his weaker chin and jawline. And that's what Looks Maxing is all about. It's about finding your flaws, then finding maybe styles of hair or other enhancements that you can do to actually improve those flaws over time. Now, if I did have to provide some recommendations, I do believe his hair is still kind of thin at the top. So if he consistently used like a minoxidil or maybe even got another hair transplant, it would come off a little bit fuller. But I do believe the fade haircut does look a bit better than just the totally bald look. And also with the beard, if you did shape it a little bit more, maybe contour the jawline area and chin area a little bit more instead of having like a, just a crazy beard, he probably could up his appeal just a little bit more. Now, the truth is, Andrew Tate could have done this from the very start. He could have been growing out his hair. He could have been growing out his beard. But I believe his post gel era is this villain arc about himself, which also comes with a different look. And more people are associating with his post jail era with this new look. Now the question is, after understanding what Andrew Tate has done, which honestly isn't too much, what can we learn from this? The first thing is that there's always room to improve yourself. As we saw in the beginning, Andrew Tate was sort of facially just an average guy. He had height on his side. He's definitely focused on building his money and his status throughout time too. But even with the money, even with building the status, even with being successful with women, he has found ways throughout time to actually improve himself and looks max, even if he consciously didn't realize he was looks maxing at the time. And once again, you do this by enhancing your weak areas and then finding ways to improve it. Number two is that looks matter even if you're already successful. We see this a lot with celebrities, celebrities who are already famous, who already have a lot of money. What do they continually do? They always get enhancements done to their face, done to their body to appear more attractive throughout time. And not only women do this, men do this all the time too. However, it is less shown within the media because men usually don't care about looks, but you guys don't realize a lot of celebrity men are doing it too. And Andrew Tate is a clear example of that. Number three, you're probably not ugly, you're just poor. At the end of the day, if you really wanna enhance your looks, it does require some sort of financial resources and it does take an awareness of what is actually wrong with yourself in order to improve it. And that's the issue I believe a lot of guys face is that either they don't have the resources or they don't actually know what to improve themselves because they don't have the eye of what I like to call objective attraction. Now, personally, I've helped guys a lot with this throughout the years and including doing this to my own self. And that's also why I personally believe every guy should strive to improve their looks. And after watching this, if you're looking to do the same, then I highly recommend you watch this video next where I show you the most effective ways you can improve your looks right now.